All right, welcome back. We continue our in-depth coverage during Mental Health Awareness Month. And today, we want to focus on our teenagers. The CDC found that in 2021, 42%, 42% of students felt persistently sad or lonely, and nearly one-third of our teens experienced poor mental health. Dr. Tanya Martin, a licensed psychologist with the Harris Center, is joining us this morning to help us kind of break down this conversation and really try to figure out, hey, what more can we do for our teens? First of all, doctor, thank you for being here. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Thank okay, you. so let's dive right in. What sort of trends have we seen really in the past decade? We were kind of talking about this just a little bit ago. Yes. Social media has played such a big role in this. Yes, absolutely. So we've seen some pretty significant trends over that decade. Um, so like you said, uh, the CDC did a particular study between tw 2011 and 2021. And in 2011, the percentage of students that reported experiencing sadness or hopelessness was 28%. And then by 2021, that number had increased to 42%. Wow. We also saw some, some pretty uh, significant increases for students that experienced either thoughts of suicide or actually attempted suicide. Mm -hmm. And so those numbers also grew over that decade. Wow. And, and, and like we said, social media is a huge part of this, too. Absolutely. It's just easier to contact contact someone, it's easier to send a message maybe that you wouldn't necessarily say to someone's face. Absolutely, yes. Social media as well as just how the way that bullying has also transformed over the past couple of years, right? So bullying now is much different in that a person can just go online, right? Yeah. And kind of say things that are hurtful or harmful to someone almost 24 seven. Whereas before it was just on the school grounds or in the neighborhood. And so that access increase in access has really uh, led to some worsening depression and anxiety yeah. among youth. Affected our teenagers. Yes. If parents are noticing some differences in their children, what should they look for? What are some of the signs that you would say? Because yes. um, teenagers may not necessarily want to talk to parents, right, at sure. that time. So parents just need to be aware of certain things. Absolutely, absolutely. Some signs that parents can be aware of are any kind of isolation. So if they see that their kids are no longer interacting with their friends or their teachers as much as they used to, that can be a pretty big sign. Um, also, any kind of changes in mood or behavior. So if you're noticing uh, that your child is not as willing to kind of interact with the family anymore in the home, or if they just seem very saddened or just very despondent, that's also can be some pretty big signs as well. Yeah. What are what are some of the trends that that you're seeing among minorities and the LGBTQ plus community as well? Yes, yeah, some very important information there too. That same study that the CDC did found that in every racial and ethnic group, there was an increase in the percentage of students that experienced some sort some sort of depression or significant hope. Mm -hmm. And so those were some very important numbers there. Also, there was the percentage of black students who attempted suicide increased over that decade. The percentage of Asian students that attempted stayed the same, so that's a more positive factor. Um, and the percentage of Hispanic and multiracial students who attempted remained the same. Yeah, and then so for LGBTQ plus youth, we saw a huge increase in anxiety over that particular decade, 2011 to 2021. And there was also an ebbing and flowing of reported uh, suicides, attempted suicides, as well as peer victimization. Mm -hmm. So we saw higher rates before the pandemic as opposed to during the pandemic. Oh, wow, that's mm -hmm. interesting. That's yeah. interesting to note. Um, doctor, why mm -hmm. do you think that the rates of the, actually the, mental health needs, mm -hmm. why do you think that those are increasing? Yes, so as we talked about before, I think certainly social media and bullying are two huge factors, as well as the pandemic, uh, like I mentioned. Additionally, I think drug use is another thing that we have to take a look at. Uh, the good news is that that CDC study found that the rates of substance use among youth has actually decreased okay. over 2011 to 2012, or 2021 rather. Yeah. However, what we're seeing on the ground on a small 
smaller scale is that the type of substances that youth are using actually seem to be leading to worsening mental illness. Mm -hmm. So things like worsening mood symptoms and worsening even psychotic symptoms. And so I think drug use in addition to bullying and social media are factors that we have to take a look at. What do you say to parents that are, okay, we, we have the signs, now what can we do to help them? Do I, do I pick up the phone? Do I, obviously I wanna to try to talk to them first, but if Absolutely. they don't wanna to talk to me, what can I do? Absolutely. So the Harris Center is an amazing resource. You know, it's the Mental Health Authority for Harris County. Um, and so that we have various locations around the city where we provide ongoing mental health care, as well as case management services. There's also things that parents can do on a daily basis. One of the best ways to help youth is to really foster a safe and healthy supportive relationship with youth so they feel comfortable to talk about those mental health struggles yeah. um, and really helping them to identify the sources of their stress. A lot of times teens as well as adults actually but teens have a hard time identifying what makes them anxious and what makes mm -hmm. them depressed mm -hmm. and so really naming that, helping them name that uh, as well as modeling and helping them practice healthy coping strategies are ways to help. And maybe that as a parent can start with also validating right the teenagers Absolutely. thoughts like Absolutely. why are you sad you get everything you want you know you have this <laughs> playstation or this or that but yeah. but everybody has a different you know they're a different stage Absolutely. they're having their issues with certain things as well absolutely we need to validate them exactly, exactly. Um, okay uh, how can people reach out how can they find more information about the Harris Center absolutely so the Harris Center like I said is the mental health authority and you can reach the Harris Center at 713-970-7000 also, there is the crisis line, uh, which you can re uh, reach at that same number, and that's available 24-7. And, of course, there is the National Suicide and Crisis Lifeline, and that number is 988. All right. Mm -hmm. Dr. Tanya Martin, thank you so much thank for you. sitting down with us and having this really important conversation. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.